It's time. It's time to go into blue skies. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to All The Mods 8. And to our first step into a new dimension in a while. Let's see what happens. Uh, an ocean spawn? <laughs> All right. So, I did hear a little scribble just then. And in the Everbright, look at this. Now we have some things. Everbright portal, a bunch of different stuff, actually. I wonder whether this is just an ocean area? We should be able to fly. And keep in mind that this stuff is going to be pretty easy uh, for the level that we are at now. But, um, oh. No, maybe some land? Okay, we do have some land. Cool. So over here, is this like a grass block, midnight sand? This is interesting. There's some lovely blocks in this if you ever wanted to get some of it for building. But we're sort of at the point now in our playthrough where I'm not really worried about that. What do I do here? Ooh, there is some stuff now. So, Blinding Dungeon. In my travels, I was able to find a giant tower structure. Decided to dub it the Blinding Dungeon. It seems this dungeon has two variations. One in the Everbright and one in the Everdawn. Both are home to Illagers. The Everbright has the Summoner and the Everdawn has the Alchemist. The two can be visited by bringing four Blinding Dungeon keys to the keystone at the top floor of their respective dungeons. I myself don't plan on picking too much of a fight with either of them. So there's some interesting stuff that we can look through. But the reality is I'm aiming for a couple of specific things. Being, where are they? Not this one. Master of, yeah. So I want this nature's arc and I want a poisonous arc. I don't know what those are from, but let's see if we can find some information on them. General... Bag of spoils. Almost anything can hold a maximum of five different items inside of it. Pickpocket a villager by crouching and using it on them while they weren't looking. Arcs. Here we go. In the folklore of the people who inhabit these worlds, there is mention of legendary artifacts known as arcs. These artifacts are rumored to only be held by the protectors of each dungeon structure in these worlds. Each arc is said to grant special powers to the one who bears it. So does that mean that we get one of those from the Everbright and one from the Everdawn? Now, as you can see, it says this tool doesn't seem to work as well here. Now, it still works perfectly fine, so we may be able to get away with it. But uh, I do believe that if it wasn't as overpowered as it was, we would be struggling a little bit. And maybe need to use some of the stuff in here to uh, make our own tools. I'm gonna grab a few of each thing that I pass by and see what I find. But yeah, this is interesting. Now, <laughs> because we can fly like this, it does mean that a lot of the exploration is quite easy to do. And I can just kind of zoom around and let the game load in a bunch of things. But I don't exactly know how to find my way to this dungeon that it speaks of. I believe we're in the Everbright. And if I'm looking for uh, at the top of the Everbright's Blinding Dungeon, is there information on the Blinding Dungeon itself? That's my question. These are fauna. These are spirits that we fight. The Everbright portal entrance to the Everbright dimension. The portal is made of turquoise stone bricks and can be lit with a zeal lighter. Yep. It seems the Everbright is constantly day, but it's somehow always brittle and cold. The world is home to lots of large, thick-coated fauna. Plenty of snow and spirit-like enemies can be found here. During the snow, more enemies are likely to show their faces, as they much prefer colder weather. Okay. Tame from the mouth of a server. Enemies seem to not like me holding it. Let's read this a little bit more. Uh, I got into a fight with an individual wearing a colored purple coat. He had used his magic powers to summon golems composed of the dungeon stone. I found that... Most times I approached this sorcerer, he would teleport himself to another section of the room. I did notice, however, if he happened to be spellcasting, I could approach safely, possibly being able to land a blow. I was able to understand that if I kept the count of golems lower than what he had summoned, but higher than one, he would begin conjuring more. I used this in my time to strike. Unfortunately, my visit to the dungeon was cut short by my power being outmatched by... This individual so i had to escape early okay so the blinding dungeon we sort of saw that we need keys and a keystone and a floor is there any information on keys hmm oh <laughs> that might be important <laughs> let's have a look over here then okay 
Okay. It, uh, it said no. <laughs> it looks like I'm not able to progress here. So there are some things that are going to stop us from uh, taking the easy way out. If I come over to... I'm not ready. Doesn't want us. Does not want us to go in there. Okay, I understand. I understand. All right. Let's see. There is a Blue Skies quest line. Here we go. This is probably the best way to go about it. Blue Skies adds two new dimensions, both filled with new blocks, creatures, and a total of four bosses. To get started, we need to find the gatekeeper. Okay. Finding the gatekeeper. Somewhere in the overworld, you'll find two simple houses. The gatekeeper lives here and will trade you a few items to get you started in the mod. Acquire the blue journal. You'll also need a zeal lighter, which I have done as well. Uh, the gatekeeper knows all about the dimensions of blue sky as you journey through the mod your blue journal will expand to help guide you he'll also trade more items as you advance through dimensions keep an eye out good to know i've used a zeal lighter and this is obviously the way to go through to the ever dawn is the different kind of house which i have seen before and we're off to the ever bright we've done that so your overworldly tools have no power here. You want to quickly make a new pickaxe from the woods around you if you want to get anywhere in blue skies. Now, we don't necessarily need to do that, but just for the sake of it, I am going to put that away in here. And I'm going to turn off my tool swapper. In fact, I can put that away too. Put that away. What else? The rest is fine. And we are going to play through this quest line a little bit like it intends. So we're going to come up here. And we're going to grab ourselves some wood. I assume I can probably make myself a nice one of these. And what does the quest line say? Any blue skies wooden pickaxe. All right. Let's do that. Starlit wood pickaxe. Nice. Here we go. From here, we upgrade to stone. It makes sense. We're basically going through the early game process once again. That's... Not what I need. Here we go, grass blocks, and then stone. I am just going to make a fancy... I can't. Oh, interesting. That's fine. We'll do this, and we will upgrade to a stone tool. Nice. Now, some of this stuff I must have gotten in, uh, in a few other things. I've got some of those before. If you want to master the lands of blue skies, you'll need to craft a new weapon, the spear. To make these, we'll need some moonstone to get started. Head to the caverns and find some ores. Okay, done that. Got myself some venison steak. And apparently I've got ventium before. Ventium tools are optional. Toolbox. This is used to upgrade and enhance tools from blue skies. You can use false sight to increase the durability of a tool. And you can use any sticks from the mod to swap out on a tool. Yes, different wood types have different uses. Huh. So, next in line is to get some... Aquite? Hmm. As we go further into the caverns of blue skies, we'll run into Aquite Ore. Mine yourself enough to make you some starter tools. You'll need these to mine the tougher blue skies ores. From here, it is recommended to find some of the better materials to make some weapons and armor. Note ATM weapons still pack a punch. Cool. Good to know. Now the moonstone here, since I mined it with some silk touch, what I will do is I'll actually mine it like this and get ourselves some shards. We'll try out these spears that we've uh, been shown off. Now, I assume that it's just, yeah, just some sticks, like so. And if I go like this, maybe I, <laughs> maybe I didn't need to make so much. Nice. Okay, they take a little durability. I'm just going to yeet a couple of these into the ocean. Bye. Have a bit of a time. <laughs> so we can keep one of those on us as a nice weapon and let's start looking for some of the metals. Now, this is what we're sort of aiming for to be able to get ourselves through. Ah, and look, you can even see that this is going to uh, get us that from the Starlight or the Starlit Crushers loot bag and from the Arachnarchs loot bag. Good to know. So let's make our way through. We are looking for Aquite. Now, the armor that I have, the speed that I have, is obviously going to make a big difference in what I'm able to achieve and how quickly. But we're sort of at the point in the pack where it's less about uh, exploring and trying out new things and more about aiming for a final goal. So I don't mind the speed and uh, 
and going through things a little bit easier. Let's also give ourselves night vision. Here we go. I do like the idea of kind of going through this whole setup, but I wonder whether there's a difference between what we can do here. Ever Dawn Tower, Ever Bright Tower, good to know. Pyrope means speed in the language of blue skies. These tools are weak, but fast. Okay, so if you make pyrope tools, you obviously get a nice amount of speed. Two attack speed is nice, but at the end of the day, I'm not really worried about trying out all the tools. I am more concerned with trying to, uh, trying to get down into a cave system like this. Here we go. This looks much better. We've got the false sight here, which I assume is another type of thing that we can get ah it will pop up maybe no it's something completely different what is this used for making some pretty stuff i guess <laughs> nothing too fancy i'm gonna put the book in my offhand for this purpose aquine that's what we're after oh yeah that's the raw aquine and then we need to uh probably make ourselves a little smelter Okay, what is this? Sea moss carpet? I'll grab a little bit more of this, just in case. Nice. We did read this uh, as we go further. Make yourself some starter tools, recommend to find some better materials, but everything does still work. And pack a punch, especially uh, if we wanted to use this sword, for example. Instructions and dungeons. In blue skies, there are four bosses to defeat and several dungeons to explore. You can find random tunnels that lead down into dungeon rooms. These will spawn in armored frost spirits to kill. Collect a few of these for the souls. Good to know. On top of that, this is the diamond of blue skies, while diopside is more durable and hits harder. Charoite. Charoite? Charoite is faster and lighter overall. Tools made from Charoite can mine anything in blue skies. Okay. Diopside is very tough metal that packs a punch, but is on the slower side. This is great for weapons. Cool. So these are obviously like lower down in the world kind of stuff. Good to know. We may as well explore down a little lower. Grab a couple of these materials as we go. Is that just straight emerald? It is. And, uh, and then probably make our way back up. I should have enough here to make myself a better pickaxe like this. Yeah. And we're going to keep these because why not? Oops. That's the one that I needed. That's the one that I'll keep because I'm sure that we need this uh, Aquite to mine the, uh, the more important stuff down lower. All we need to do is uh, actually find a way down, which I'm sure shouldn't be too hard. Oh, diopside. There we go. I don't know exactly how low this goes, but what is that one? Ventium? Did I get that one already? Aquite, pyrope. Genuinely a bunch of different kinds of stuff. Let's see what this said. Anyway, we need three. I'm looking for a different kind of purple for the, uh, what's it called? Charoite. Charoite? Charoite? <laughs> Charoite. I'll try and stick with Charoite, I think. Oh, there's a bit more of what we need. That takes that one off the list. Uh, I don't think we're really going to go for the armor, but it does look like that's pretty decent level of armor. Not bad. And I assume that the tools would be fairly nice. All right, let's see if we can find the purple type of ore. And then, what is the way to start this? How do you get the binding dungeon keys? Whether you started in Everbright or Everdawn, you want to search for the tower, a 4A tower structure. There are images of them in the next quests. This is where you find your first boss. In the smaller parts of the tower, you'll fight for loot and acquire some blinding dungeon keys. Deep within the dungeon, there will be a doorway with a lock on it. Use four of the binding keys to unlock the boss fight. Note, the boss will drop an arc upon defeat. These can be equipped in a special tab in your inventory. There are four arcs in total. Interesting. There we go. That's the tower. Well, that's one of the towers there. What's this one? This is in the Ever Dawn. Is there any more information? The different things. Ah, that's what we looked at before. So you obviously have to fight your way through these towers. 
Uh, the boss will use lightning energy attacks and, of course, summoned golem guards. Can you best the summoner? And then that will give us the stuff that we need for these. You'll find nature's dungeon within the Everbright. You can't miss it. It's huge. Yeah, we found that. Gather some nature dungeon keys within the maze of the structure to unlock the boss fight and chop him down. You can trade with the gatekeeper in case you can't find all the keys, but only after you right-click the gate for the boss fight. Okay, so we need these things. All right, I think my best bet is to try and maybe find myself some Charoite and then uh, make our way back up top, see what we can find. I assume that the false sight is to uh, throw you off the trail of being able to find the Charoite. I wonder if it looks the same. Not sure. The reality is, though, we're probably okay to make our way out, and if we don't find any, we just don't find any. And we need to keep an eye out for a tower. Interesting. Oh, does that just go straight outside, or is that a visual glitch? Nope, it's straight out. Okay, I think we'll just leave it at gathering a few of those materials, and see if we can find one of those fancy towers that we just saw a picture of. Oh, hello, friends. I assume that they're probably just uh, somewhere in the landscape if we fly around. There seems to be a lot of ocean. I wonder whether it is uh, randomly generated so much or if it is uh, just an island that we can explore. There does seem to be a lot of ocean around the outside. This could definitely be an interesting adventure if you went in early. And also a cool place to get some uh, unique blocks and unique items, even tools wise for uh, starting off a little bit of a playthrough. Snow cap mushroom stem, huh? Very interesting. I'm gonna put away a few things in here. Uh, I, apparently I accidentally just put everything from my uh, my hot bar away in there. I don't know I could do that. I'll keep a little bit of the food, try out some different meals. In fact, I'm gonna turn off my auto eat so that I try out some of these foods. And yeah, let's see what happens from here. Now, thankfully, we have a map, so it's not too hard to remember where certain things are, like our, uh, our teeny tiny little spawn there, but also this. So I'm just going to kind of uh, do a bit of a loop. It looks like it may be sort of an island, so whether it's uh, randomly generated up to a certain point, but it doesn't go too big, I'm not sure. The PC is doing what it can to uh, load it nice and quick for me, which is nice. But yeah, I do get the feeling that... Uh, this is just like an overall island shape instead of it being endless. Could be wrong. I could have just lucked out with the uh, the shape that I got personally. All right, where's this tower? Ah, wait, is that a different one? It is a different one. Interesting. I see a village, which is cool. Oh, I do love the blocks in here. The turquoise stone bricks, the... Uh, the muted color of the starlit log is really nice. And if I can get inside, what do we find? Yeah, <laughs> nothing much. We'll have a look around though. These guys are just villagers. Okay. Oh, ha ha. Hello, my friend. Very nice. So this tower, we'll see how we go with uh, just using a spear or two. But if we do have to switch over and pull out the uh, the older modium sword, that's fine. Oh, these are cute reindeer. Because I'm not <laughs> I'm not necessarily going for a. Uh, oh. <clears throat> I can do it. What? Uh, blah. Yeah. Perfect. Did it definitely by jumping. <laughs> now this. Ooh. That's a beautiful block. This tower, I assume, should be fairly straightforward. Uh, that's a fairly standard kind of thing. Do we just go to the top and fight a boss? Oh. Now, because of our armor, we should be perfectly fine. What are these? Uh, five armor's not bad. Oh, a dungeon key. That's good. Eh. I cannot do that right now. Interesting. Won't let me uh, free them. Okay. The damage on these are pretty decent. What's that? Cherry sapling from Blue Skies? I can't do that either. Oh, so maybe I need to uh, finish the tower before I can take anything from it. There's a cat. Another dungeon key. That's nice. Uh, anything in here? <laughs> 
little maze. There we go. That's three. Just need one more. Hmm. Where would I find the fourth? Been there. We've been there. What else? We go on from there. <laughs> oh, I fell. That's fine. It looks like there is four. So what one was I missing? Hmm. Still layer by layer again. Come up here. There is this layer, which we got one out of. That's one. We come up here and then there was two layers. Was there anything in here to grab from? I don't know if there was. Over this side, there definitely was. We got something from there. Further up this way, we definitely got something from in that room. And then uh, it was all the way to the top. Hmm. Is this something that we, uh, we need? You need four to enter. Gotcha. The gatekeeper is now selling binding keys. Okay. So it might have just been that we got unlucky with uh, not getting the, uh, the keys that we needed. I wonder if this is the only tower in this area. You wouldn't think so. We're here. Let's do a little explore over this direction. If we don't find anything over there, then, uh, then we'll go back and talk to our little trading guy out in the overworld. Another village. Is there another tower? Oh, there's another one of those. And we're back on the coast. I think we'll just go back out and uh, and check with our friend. And where's my little portal? Here we go. <laughs> so that should mean that you, yeah. Okay, I just need some books, some emeralds, and we're gonna grab one of these. Perfect. And, uh, <laughs> where was it again? That way. <laughs> Jetpacks are so crazy powerful. And a zoom. So I'm going to try this with just, uh, <laughs> just some Starlight Spears, but worst case scenario, I can, uh, I can swap over to this. I'm going to put it in my hotbar just in case. Let's, oh, okay. Oh, that's right. So it said, try and keep the golems down and make him summon. Right, so while he's summoning golems, we can use that time to damage him. Now, obviously, I'm like, I'm pretty much indestructible. <laughs> this, uh, this armor is really, really strong. So I'm not too worried about this. If you were taking this on without much prep and only using the in-mod stuff, it might be a bit of a different story. All right, we're going up to half health. All oh, these guys seem angrier. This is a cool little uh, setup though. It obviously traps you in here, so you have to fight in this room. And if I was like wearing just blue skies armor, I feel like this would be pretty fun. Uh, what's that? Transfer units of core extraction fully charged. Don't know what I did there. <laughs> Very interesting. Oh, I got floated. Oh, you were healing just then. Interesting. That flame seems to make me float too, which is cool. So a little bit like the, uh, the wither. If you leave it alone for too long, it, uh, yeah, there we go. It uh, it obviously heals itself up. We got ourselves a summoner loot bag, which is nice. What else? Summoner trophy. And that's about it in that regard. What do we get here? We got some soul fragments, an ethereal arc, which is cool. Grants 10% movement speed. Nice. An elongated soulbound spear. That is going to be an upgrade from that possibly less damage but more range okay and these souls can be used for making a warding pearl which can make a cover hollow cover yeah and back we go so in that quest line we've definitely done that i could have got some free keys but that's fine we got ourselves this arc soulbound spear and we beat the summoner so we actually have six of these uh, dungeon keys. Does that mean that we can go across now to the big boy dungeon? I think it does. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm in a little bit of pain. So I guess that means I can just zoom across the sky here until I find this thing. Is it going to kick me out this time? Let's start at the bottom. No. All right. We're safe. Oh my god. I am a porcupine. So this is going to be a matter of... Ooh. Oh. Oh. You're cool looking. I like you. In fact, what do they drop? Let's see. I'm going to put away a few things. Actually, I'm going to put away in here a few things. And I'm just going to grab out this. Because I kind of want that. A stone let spawner. Do they drop the nature stone? That could be cool. Let's see if we can get one to spawn and see what they drop. I can't really tell if it's dropping anything or is it going straight into my inventory. Let's just turn off the uh, pickup stuff and refill stuff. And let's see. <laughs> Maybe just Inferium? Not sure. I'm just going to break these ones normally because I already have one. We'll take those goodies too. Now, I assume that uh, as we go up the layers, I'm going to find some uh, some keys and stuff, I think it said. We're obviously going to find a bunch of these spawners. Giant slaying a quiet axe of the titan. Not going to bother with that. <laughs> How does this one work? Yeah, they still work pretty well. This is a nice tree too. Hum, 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 hum. To a certain degree, a lot of this stuff I can kind of just walk through. But I do want to make sure... Ooh, that's not too bad. I do want to make sure that I uh, I do check all of these chests at least. And make sure that uh, there's not like anything specific for progression inside of them as a chance. Okay. I just kind of think I'll, uh, I'll go past plus five step height. That's disgusting. I want it. <laughs> I'm just going to go past all of these spawners now. Uh, I don't think it really is going to uh, achieve anything by making sure that I break them all. So we can uh, we can zoom past these guys. And it looks like that is the way up. The amount of loot that uh, we get from these different rooms is not really that spectacular. So it's uh, sort of just a run and gun kind of thing. These are still stonelets. So they're nothing special, no upgrades. We can just get some spare spears. But other than that, uh, yeah, we're just sort of looking for our way up. <laughs> Feeling a little Indiana Jones-ish. And a way up, perhaps? Here we go. Perfect. There's nothing really worth spending your time looting, especially if you're at the point that I'm at now. Uh, it looks like most of these chests sort of have nothing but a couple of nice blocks from this uh, this mod itself. It's definitely something that you could approach earlier on in your playthrough and attempt to get some good stuff from. Like, I think some of these things, like the arcs, maybe they, where do they go? Element holder? Rings? Where would they go? I'm really not quite sure. Usually they say the uh, slot that they go in. Or does just holding it in general in your inventory do that for you? I'm not sure. Oh, this seems to be a way up. And it doesn't seem like we are getting... Uh, I can sort of just walk up this. I don't even have to jump. It doesn't seem like we're getting anything as far as... Uh, oh, nice. As far as like keys and stuff. So I think our only quest here is to just get to the top oh there we go i actually spoke slightly too soon put aside some of this stuff cool nature dungeon chest key T dungeon key <laughs> why did i say chest now we're just going to find our way up to the top is this the way up or is this just general parkour stuff oh charawan I assume that maybe towards the center, or is there one more little walkway up to the top? That's the way down. Mm. Is it now just a matter of going outside again? 
Or have I checked not everything? <laughs> I'm zooming. Yeah, I think it may be a, uh, a little venture outside. To the very top. All right. Where did we uh, find our way down? Oh, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, I was mistaken. The last room. I think this is it. We have this nature dungeon key. And as far as I can tell, that's going to get us into the top of this to fight whatever we need to, to get our first piece, the nature arc. If I use that, I need four. I need four of these. <laughs> oh, wow. So we, we did not get lucky with how many we found. And I searched a lot of chests. Guess we'll just uh, double check a few of them just to be safe. Not very lucky at all. Really not lucky. I only found one. All right, I'll go down. I'll try and find my way back out of here. Oh, wait, nope. See if I can get back out to our friend and purchase. Wait, there's one. Yeah, I don't like my chances. Never say never though. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I will uh, I will still go through and see if I can find the uh, the chests that I need and find it in here. If not, I'll go back out, check with our friend at the door, purchase some if I need to, and then come back and take on the top of this area. Oh, oh what about in here? This is interesting, but also no. Okay, I'll see you back at the door, one way or another, with four of these keys. Oh, lucky I was collecting those saplings. <laughs> I, uh, I needed one more of those. I did find a third, but I guess it goes to show that uh, it is worth collecting all of the things out of the, uh, the chests as you go. Thank you, sir. Now, let's go take on this dungeon. Can I get in the top from here, or do I have to make my way back through the whole thing? Damn it. <laughs> It's a maze. <laughs> it takes so long to find your way through. Uh, this way. If I find one in here. <sighs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. It's completely fine. Yeah, it's completely a-okay. Yep, it's, uh, it's cool. It's cool. It's great. <laughs> That is a good reminder though, to uh, to make sure you check every room if you are looking for them. I'm so lost. Where, which direction did I come from? Am I in a loop? Here we go. More chests? Oh, thank goodness. Oh no. Thank goodness. Obviously there was a lot more to this base layer than I uh, originally anticipated. This way, and here we go. The slightly broken staircase is the way up. There we go. Another staircase, another one, and let's find our way out. The top here? Yeah, okay. While looking around before, I did get this one, which we're going to swap out as our main. This has a little bit of extra attack, some decent extras, as well as some attack range, lifesteal, and cold damage. So that's going to hopefully get us through. Okay. I'd say we're locked inside here with the Starlit Crusher. Oh. Excuse you. Oh, little spikies. Maybe an axe will work. I didn't make an axe, no. <laughs> All right, uh, I guess we're getting out an axe. Are you? This is super cool though. Like floor based uh, things to fight. Maybe an axe will work. I was trying an axe. Oh my god, do I need to make... Come here. Do I need to make an axe from stuff? <laughs> quick, super quick crafting. Come on. Uh, what are these? I can't place down that. Oh no. Oh, we're in trouble. Uh-oh. This is possibly a problem. Can I get up through the middle? Yeah. In your face. Maybe an axe would work. Oi. I think I might have made a mistake. Can I escape? You can't leave now, there's an active boss. Do I have a crafting table in here? 
I don't. Um, we may need to do a cheeky here because I think I've accidentally uh, locked myself into a bit of a problem. What I'm going to do is quickly just uh, use this. We are going to craft ourselves up using maybe this gem here. Three of those and two of those to make a diopside axe. Yeah, we're going to do that and then slash back. Okay, let's see. There we go. So yeah, you need a axe that is not all the modium. It must need to be uh, something from the Blue Skies mod pack. Get wrecked. Oh, this is kind of cool. It's actually a really, really cool uh, little boss here. If I did not have myself set up with some good armor, this would be quite challenging, I feel. Like a genuine dungeon boss. Get rid of these things. Okay, so attack until he spins. While he spins, avoid, uh, avoid things. And then uh, he kind of dizzies himself a little. There we go. Spinny spin. Get dizzy. Definitely does hurt. Okay, sort of a uh, a very Zelda-like uh, boss. Work out the patterns, avoid certain things, take down defenses. I like it. Oh, he's out! Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't even pay attention enough. He started spinning outside. Must be because we got him under half health. Okay. Yeah, wear yourself out. He's trying to go back into his little hidey hole in the middle. Now, the knockback that he has is insane. I don't exactly know what these do. Maybe poison? Sorts of stuff going on. Come on, we can do this. I genuinely feel like this would be a <laughs> difficult boss to take on if you uh, weren't as far ahead as I am and as fast and able to move around as much. Alright, wear yourself out. And there we go. One more. Yeah! There we go. That very much did feel like something out of a, uh, a Zelda game. I love it. And what's this? Oh, it's just a sapling that maybe you can regrow the, uh, or redo the fight. Very cool. And then from that, we should have... Ha <laughs> ha! Our first piece. Very nice. Of, uh, of what we need. Crushing hammer. Did I get a crushing hammer? No, I got some leaves. That right there, though, is the first piece of this. Part of the uh, the quest line that we wanted to go through to get ourselves this dragon soul. And the other side, as far as I can tell, seems to require going into the Ever Dawn. The Ever Dawn requires finding a slightly different house to uh, to go through. But I think for this episode, we've done pretty good. We managed to make our way in here, understand a few things, and kind of speed run the process of going through this dungeon. Can I break my way out of here now? Ah, oh, thank goodness, <laughs> of uh, making our way through this dungeon. And so, because of that, it is now snowing. Oh, I did say that when it snows, we get more enemies. I think we're going to make our way over to the middle of the ocean here. Where? Somewhere. Somewhere. Why is there so many fish? There we go. <laughs> Where we, uh, we can make our way back out of the Everbright and start looking for the Ever Dawn. But I think that'll be next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, not the uh, not the most amazing look at this uh, this mod, obviously because we speed ran some things, um, going through it very very quickly because of our ability to fly and our ability to use different tools and such. Uh, we learned a little that you definitely need to make an axe to fight that secondary boss there. But we're halfway through. 
the things that we need from this mod. So with that, I am going to say thank you very much for watching, and thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support. You folks are amazing. I genuinely appreciate you supporting me and helping me continue to do this. Oh, it looks like the snow's clearing up. And I hope you're looking forward to more from this series, as well as more stuff from different mod packs and different things in the future. If you did enjoy this episode, it'd really help you if you left a like. And in the next episode, we're going to head over to the Ever Dawn and see if we can make our way through these dungeons. Ooh, poison dungeon, huh? Interesting. So, until the next episode, I hope you all take care of yourselves, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh...